Welcome to Asbury United Methodist Church. Praise the Lord and welcome. My name is Reverend Tracy Wolf, and I'm the pastor and director of the Field Campus Ministry. And I'm filling in for Pastor Erica this morning, and I'm so glad you're here and able to join us today. We want to welcome everyone, wherever you are today. If you're inside, uh, behind the scenes this morning with us, if you are watching online live, or even if you're watching a taped version of this later, welcome. Whether you're a guest, a longtime visitor, a first-time visitor, or a member, welcome today. I want to invite you to fill out a connection card. You can uh, do that in, I think it's in the chat below, how to do that. I'm hoping B is taking care of that. Um, so you can fill that out, and also, you're going to let us know who's with you, so who you are and who's with you worshiping today. You can also use that same card to learn more about um, Asbury. If there's something you want to know, a question you have, if you're looking for ways to connect outside of worship, um, you can fill that out on the card as well. I also want to invite you at this time to offer your prayer concerns and praise reports and you can do that by going to asburyunitedmethodist.org slash prayer dash wall. Now those prayers will be kept private if you go there to fill those out. 
Somebody will be praying for you this week, whatever you choose to share in that space. If you have something you would like to share publicly, you can do that in the chat just below. So those are two ways you can do that throughout service. I also invite you to use the chat just to speak to one another, to greet one, one another this morning, and just to say hello. We do have a few brief announcements this morning as well. Next Sunday is Epiphany, when we celebrate the Magi visiting the baby Jesus by means of a star. Be sure to bring your stack of star words from the Advent in a bag so you can set your intention with a star word for 2021. Also, a final reminder to bring in your, no your donations to Isabel's house. Our online host, B, who I already referred to, will pop, pop up those items in the chat that are being collected. We also want to take a pause at this moment to wish a few happy birthdays for this week. Happy birthday to Sean, Alina, I hope I'm saying your name right, I hope you can forgive me if I'm not, Ella and Nicole, and anyone else celebrating birthdays this week. As we come into worship, I invite you to be still, to be in the presence of God, let go of the things that are burdening you or holding you back. Take a deep breath. If you have a candle in front of you, light it now to help remind you that Christ, our light, is always present before us. Even though we're apart this morning, we're together. I invite you at this time to join with me wherever you are as we share our call to worship. Here on the heels of Christmas, we speak of love. We speak of joy. We speak of candlelight and fireside. We speak of dreams being fulfilled. We speak of glorias and angel choruses. We speak the words, do not be afraid. Here on the heels of Christmas, we are called to speak for the world needs a light. A light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. Let us worship and listen, then let us speak. Amen. Divine voice, in the beginning, it was you who spoke over the water and brought forth creation. And again, it was you who asked Cain, where is his brother? It was you who spoke to Elijah in a still, small voice. And it is you, through angels, who spoke to Mary and Joseph and the shepherds. You have always been speaking in words, in memories, in songs, and in dreams. So today, as we prepare to hear your word read aloud, we ask that you would speak to us again, as only you can, so that we might speak the same good news to others. We are listening. We are grateful. Amen.
and go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Our scripture this morning, in our scripture this morning, we meet two dreamers named Simeon and Anna. Simeon had been holding on to a word spoken to him from the Holy Spirit, which told him that he would not die before seeing the Messiah. The day Mary and Joseph showed up at the temple in accordance with the law of Moses, Simeon just happened to be there. Anna, who was a prophet and a widow, also just happened to be there that day. She was 84 years old and had been living in the temple for many years, fasting and praying night and day. They had been dreaming of the Messiah all their lives, and on this day, they would see their dreams come true. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. At that moment, Anna came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. In the lectionary readings for this first Sunday after Christmas, there's this story about Simeon and Anna and their encounter with the Holy Family. It's coupled with a reading from Isaiah, which includes these words from chapter 62, verse 1. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest. When we meet Simeon and Anna, we meet two people who are speaking up and speaking out. Two people who demonstrate what it looks like to live into Isaiah's words. I will not keep silent and I will not rest. I wonder what the days and years were like leading up to this moment for these two servants of God. I wonder how many years it was that Simeon, how many years ago it was that Simeon first heard this promise from the Holy Spirit that he would not leave this earth before seeing the Messiah. We don't know how long it really was or even how old Simeon was. But in my holy imagination, this was a promise for a long time, maybe even decades, maybe a promise that was given to him in his youth, a promise that over and over again in the course of his life maybe looked like nothing was going to happen, or even worse, maybe it looked like it was impossible. I don't know about you, but I've had some promises that looked that way along the way. I wonder if the people, I wonder if he told people about his vision. I wonder if he told people about the word from the Spirit of God, or is it something, some kind of thing he held close to his heart and never spoke about? The kind of thing he told his close friends, but nobody else. I wonder. I wonder. And what about the prophet Anna of the tribe of Asher? Has she been quietly fasting and praying all these years in silence? Scripture speaks of her fasting daily. Well, what was it that compelled her to fast over and over again? And was she quiet, shy, and timid? As an 84-year-old prophet, 
Did she keep things inside herself in the temple and her prayers inside her heart? Mm. I imagine that these two people spoken about in this story were steeped in the words of their tradition, especially these words from Isaiah 62 and other parts of Isaiah, which it appears was very important to the people of Luke's community. I think Simeon and Anna spoke up and spoke out. I think they were not silent at all. Simeon is described as a righteous and devout man and that the Holy Spirit rested upon him. I think this man would have told everyone about the word that had been given to him. In fact, I imagine him talking about it to someone just before coming to the temple that day. It doesn't say that in scripture. I just imagine it. Just before seeing Mary and Joseph and their child, I imagine him somewhere near the temple telling the story again of how God gave him a promise. And then suddenly, mid-sentence, he's guided by the Holy Spirit, as the scripture says, and goes to the temple. And there's the Messiah in the flesh. And Simeon knows who Jesus is immediately. Before a single word can be shared by Mary or Joseph, before they have time to tell him about being visited by angels and magi and shepherds who were all summoned by the Spirit of God, Simeon knows. He knew because he too was summoned by the Spirit, summoned to the temple on just the right day, at just the right time, to see this dream come true. And Anna. Anna is described as a prophet from the tribe of Asher. She had only been married for a short time before being widowed and then spent the rest of her life living in the temple, serving God, fasting, and praying. On that same day, I imagine Anna preaching and teaching. After all, she was a prophet. I imagine her somewhere on the temple ground, surrounded by people listening to the word of God coming from her. And mid-sentence, she stops. She gets up, guided by the Holy Spirit. At that moment, she came just like Simeon. She walked into the temple and she knew. She knew who this child was, and she began praising God and speaking about the newborn king to all who would listen. Simeon and Anna tarried in prayer. They tarried in hope, in hope of their dreams being fulfilled for many years. Simeon held on to the vision, the dream, the hope that he was given by the Holy Spirit, that he would see the Messiah. I, for one, do not believe he was ever silent about what the Lord had promised him. And Anna, the prophet, the Spirit of God compelled her to keep on praying and keep on fasting year in and year out, day in and day out. And as a prophet, I don't imagine her to be a very quiet woman. I imagine her speaking everything the Lord laid on her heart. In fact, I think the only time Anna was quieted in her life was when this author wrote down her story. <laughs> Here in Luke, we hear from Simeon. He gets to speak for himself. But Anna, Anna the prophet, we hear about her, but we don't hear from her. Both Simeon and Anna were dreamers who believed God was going to do something new during their lifetimes. They were hope-filled followers of God who would not remain silent about the goodness of God. They wouldn't remain silent about the coming Messiah or about justice and the redemption of Jerusalem or the hope for all nations. You know, at this moment, as I think about this story, 
I'm thinking about my own ancestors who were enslaved but still believed that someday slavery would end. I'm not just thinking about the generation that actually saw it happen, like Simeon and Anna saw the promised Messiah. No, I'm also thinking about the generations that did not see the end of slavery, yet still hoped in the next generation and the next generation, instilled hope in those generations, one after another, until the dream came true, until the dream of freedom became a reality. My question for you today is this. What has God spoken to you? What promise has God given to you that looks like it just might not happen? Have you been keeping it to yourself? Well, maybe it's time to speak about it and trust God to bring it to fruition. And even if the promise doesn't happen the way you thought it should or in the timing that you thought it would, maybe, just maybe, God is using you to instill hope into the one who will see the promise come true. God is calling us to speak out about the things that have been promised. God is calling us not just to speak when the promise comes true, but before it looks like it will ever happen. That's what we learn from our friends Simeon and Anna. Let's leave this place today as dreamers who will not keep silent. Dreamers who will not let hopelessness keep us quiet. Dreamers who will dare to share the promises of God before they look possible. Let's be dreamers who dream of a community where the hungry are fed, the homeless are housed, and justice prevails for all. Let us dream and speak out and hope for these things to come to pass in our lifetimes. May God make us into dreamers who will not be silent. Amen. Amen. If you have prayers in response to this morning's word, I invite you once again to list them at this time. We have prayer requests uh, for Teresa, who's not with us this morning. She was going to the emergency room this morning because of back pain and prayers that they'll find an answer for her. We've had a request for prayers uh, prayers for the Buttram family and the death of their son, Spencer, due to COVID. 
We've had prayers uh, requested for Elizabeth Latou's nephew, Eddie's family, who passed away from COVID. Services being held next Sunday. We've had a request for prayers for the Peters family. They've had two family members die, one on Thanksgiving Day and one on Christmas Day. Uh, Jackie, uh, thank you for prayers and support on the loss of her mother, Elizabeth. We have a prayer request or continued prayers for Kathy and Mike Austin, friends who are dealing with COVID. Uh, Janet requests uh, prayers for the continued healing of her senses of taste and smell, which both disappeared three months ago. And those are all the requests other than the ones listed on the screen. Let us pray. Lord, this morning we lift up those who are sick and continuing to go downhill with illnesses, including the coronavirus and anything else causing sickness. Lord, we pray for all those afflicted by, affected by the loss of so many to this pandemic. We also pray for those affected by other losses during this time that are not related to this virus. Lord, we pray that you would comfort all who mourn and grieve. Lord, we pray for those having surgeries and procedures in the coming days. We pray for their safety and for their recovery. We pray for those entrusted to care for them. Lord, we pray for all those working in settings and situations that put them at high risk, at higher risk than many of us who are able to work from home during this time. We pray that you would help us as a community and as a nation to give high regard for the welfare of those around us. Lord, compel us to do all that we can to love our neighbors. We also pray for those who have received good news while so many are facing deep sorrow. Lord, give us the wherewithal to be joyful for those who are in, in experiencing things worthy of celebration. Help us to be creative and safe in the ways we choose to celebrate the many accomplishments that are happening around and among us. God of today and tomorrow, we know that your fingerprints are all over this world. And we know that those who dream cannot keep silent. So today we pray, give us eyes to see, give us courage to trust you. Give us lips to speak of you in our midst. Lord, we believe in telling the story, the story of a loving and merciful God who will not let God's people go, the story of a baby who grew up and changed the world, the story of our faith. We believe in speaking up, speaking up for our neighbors, for the oppressed, for the overlooked and the marginalized. We believe in speaking out, speaking out against violence and greed and anger and abuse and fear and bigotry. We believe in passing the mic so that we are not the only ones speaking, so that we can lift up the voices of those around us, so that we too might listen and learn. And we believe in the good news of the gospel. We believe that this good news is too good to keep to ourselves. We believe that those who dream cannot keep silent. Holy God, speak to us and through us. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to this time of offering, I often, when doing an offering, will say something like, God, do something through us that we cannot do by ourselves. That only happens when we collectively give together. So I want to lift up just a couple of things. One is the ministry that I am involved in and responsible for. The field campus ministry is actually a ministry of the conference, the Missouri Annual Conference. And it is only possible because of you and because of your giving, because of your apportionments. I know often the things that happen at the conference level seem so far away, but I want you to know that your giving is impacting your community right here in Springfield. I would not be able to do what I'm doing. I would not be able to fulfill this appointment without you. So on behalf of the Field Campus Ministry, thank you. Thank you for your giving. I also uh, was made aware that last week, you, uh, part of your giving went to Pitch Chapel and to, I think, the Connecting Ground were the two things that you did your offering on behalf of. I often worship at Pitch Chapel, so on behalf of Pastor Reverend uh, uh, Russell Yule and on behalf of the entire congregation at Pitch Chapel, thank you for doing that. There are a very large needs in the facilities there. The ministry at Pitch Chapel is vital to the community, not just to the black community, but the community as a whole in, in Springfield. And as pastors shared last week, Pitts is not only the only black Methodist church in Springfield, it is the only black Methodist church in our district. So your giving is important for this vital ministry to continue. And I just want to say thank you on behalf of them. Let us respond to this time of giving by singing the doxology. And now let us join together in our closing song, Do You Hear What I Hear?
Said the shepherd boy to the mighty king Do you know what I know? in the cold, let us bring him silver and gold, let us bring him silver and hear what I hear, and do you, I guess what I want to say this afternoon as we end is, did we hear what Anna and Simeon had to say? Did we hear their words, and will we heed them? Will we do as they did and not remain silent? to speak our truth and to speak out about the promises of God that we are trusting God for. I'm so glad you were able to join us today. I'm glad you were here and I hope you are leaving uplifted and encouraged to speak out. Receive now this benediction. In the name of God, the original dreamer, Jesus, the dream come true, and this Holy Spirit who enables us to be those who dream. Go in peace and go in love. Amen.